Hi, everybody. Uh, congratulations. Uh, so we've made it this far with uh, COVID-19, and um, I think we now want to talk a little bit about recovery now that the governor has announced his, his phase-in plan. Uh, just to let you know, uh, we have developed as a management team a recovery plan that basically follows the trajectory of the, of the governor's four phases. Uh, so be beginning now, and now is uh, Thursday, uh, campus grounds uh, are open for, uh, for walking and, uh, and enjoying the, the fine, uh, fine weather we're having. Um, Kristen, uh, we'll we'll begin announcing exercise classes that uh, we're able to hold uh, in the in the fitness center. Uh, and don't don't anyone to get nervous about uh, the squabbles over fitness centers. Um, we we've checked and we're, we're able to offer uh, these classes. Uh, the craft and chat room and the patio uh, are open, uh, but with uh, limitations on numbers of people. The library, book nook, and puzzle room uh, will be opened. Uh, same thing, there'll be limitations on numbers of people. Uh, the cafe remains takeout for now while Mark uh, works out of a dining plan. Uh, and I assume Greg and Mark will talk to you regarding the services that they manage. So uh, really the important points are that if you're walking outside in groups, that you need to maintain separation, uh, we're saying between six and eight feet, or uh, wear a mask. Uh, if you're in the buildings, you absolutely have to wear a mask. Uh, so we will gradually restore more services as we see how phase one unfolds and how adherence to rules plays out. We've been so successful because, quite frankly, as a community, people pulled together and uh, sucked it up and, and uh, made the best out of all the rules and regulations and restrictions and I think it's paid off. So we want to see that that continues as we start re unwinding some of the services that uh, ha have been restricted. Uh, I will say Knollwood and assisted living remain closed to visitors and uh, they, they are on a separate uh, schedule uh, that's consistent with the fact that most people, especially in the nursing home, are, are combating a myriad of problems and uh, need that extra boost before we open up the building. Uh, as, as you know, Knollwood uh, has had very good success in, uh, with the virus, uh, having basically carried one case uh, through uh, through April, and uh, just a note on that too. Uh, we've always told people uh, we've had one case, and of course the state publishes a scorecard. And if you looked on the scorecard, uh, Nolan was between 10 and 30 cases, and uh, we that's been attributed to a. Um, one of the junior mathematicians uh, uh, that worked for the Department of Public Health who decided to aggregate all our week's reports and count them as uh, cases. We, 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 we sent a letter of uh, protest, if you will, and a request for a, uh, an adjustment, and uh, I believe that took place. So we, we are still, at this point, uh, COVID-19 free at, uh, at Knollwood. Uh, same is true of the campus. Uh, there are no known uh, issues uh, 
And again, we have to say no known because of the uh, asymptomatic uh, situation. Uh, to our knowledge, uh, we've done very well here. And uh, we would like to continue that process. As you know, this, uh, this virus isn't going to disappear soon. Uh, so, but I think we, as a community, ready to, 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 to tackle uh, to tackle it as we go into the summer. Uh, cottages and apartments, we are discouraging visitors, trying to decrease the probability of, a, of the virus being brought into the community. But nonetheless, in all cases, uh, anyone coming into our buildings must wear a mask uh, and uh, will be challenged at the door. Uh, because it's that critical for us. Um, with respect to memory care, we are still trying to get the state to certify the unit, but surveyors are overworked now, like everybody else, being pulled into the Department of Public Health to, to resurvey nursing homes. Uh, there, isn't, there isn't much else. Uh, to report on. It's, all, it's been all COVID all the time. But I, I would like to end uh, on a high note, and that is 277 East Mountain Street. Uh, East Mountain Street, uh, that revenue stream has started. Uh, the company we're leasing to uh, is uh, current uh, with their lease payments and expects to be so going forward. And while we thought April would really be a terrible month given the restrictions on admissions and the precipitous decline in the markets, we were able through successful research and application uh, to the federal and, and state relief programs generate a gain from operations of $17,000 for April. Uh, with earnings before interest and appreciation and amortization of $323,000. Uh, now, some of that is, reflects the um, relief we got through the Small Business Administration, and um, which amounted to one million four, uh, approximately $1,400,000, which we poured 75% into uh, wage, wage in, temporary wage increases to all the people that are battling on our behalf, uh, fighting hard for us, particularly at the, the caregivers, the direct caregivers. And um, in, in any event, uh, it, it was a nice way to end, end, end the month that was otherwise a nightmare for everybody. So I'd like to say in, in closing, just be conservative in your encounters and please wear your masks and maintain your separations from people. We've done so well so far and l l let's just keep it up and as we roll out more and more of the programs we're used to. Thank you. Hi everyone, Alice here. Um, Good to talk to you again. I'm going to imagine that I'm seeing all of you. Um, I would like to start with uh, saying something on behalf of the management team and Paul Bowler and our board of trustees, which is about the golf outing. And as you know, that's a community event. This would have been our 12th year. And due to all circumstances with the pandemic, we um, have canceled it. And Wachusett Country Club, which along with other golf clubs in Massachusetts, has opened under very stringent um, regulations for golfers, but no golf clubs are doing outings right now. So the development committee had some discussion about this. Um, and we, have, we had delayed the annual appeal mailing, typically by this point, You'd have uh, the appeal, the spring mailing for the annual appeal, and we'd be working on the golf outing. Uh, we delayed the annual appeal mailing. That's going to go into June, and 
we discussed, since we're not having a golf outing, to um, expand the mailing to some of our sponsors and advertisers who would not typically receive the appeal letter. So um, there is more discussion about that, but we are actively working on getting that mailing ready for mid-June. Now I want to turn to marketing and sales, and I know Danny uh, will cover some of the details about the depositors and move-ins. We are seeing activity picking up with people interested in coming to see Briarwood. I have an appointment this afternoon to show some cottages to an individual, and we're talking about um, expanding our ability to give tours to some of the common areas right now. A lot of the marketing uh, activity we focused on is relative to the Evergreens memory care. And while we don't have the certification yet, it's pending. We are moving full speed ahead on having a landing page on our website, a brochure, press release ready to go. Um, we have a waiting list. We've identified the, the first round of move-ins. And so we'll be ready when the certification is final. And I have been taking more photos out on the campus. Tomorrow during the clap if you care, I will um, be down on the lower road and I've tried to get around to different places on the campus. Um, I hope to see you there. It's so much fun and it's just great to see everybody out and enjoying better weather this week. I wish you um, good health and stay safe and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much. Hello from the Birches and sales. Um, just a few updates on our end. Um, our newest residents have some pretty good news. Jerry and Marion Warren are no longer under the quarantine. So if you're outside and you happen to see them underneath their masks, feel free to say hello. Always um, practicing social distance. So from afar, um, we are slowly moving towards the new norm here at Briarwood. However, we are still very, we're still seeing a lot of interest from people in the community. Um, Alice and I have been scheduling tours and vis visits all while practicing social distancing and taking all precautions, masks and visits are cut short. Um, in fact, we do have a couple new residents joining our community in June. On June 3rd, Fordyce and Holden Williams will be moving into Cottage 79. So again, give them a warm welcome. And July 1st, Elizabeth, who goes by Betty Ann Hazelhurst, will be moving into Cottage 4. In addition to all of this, the Briarwood community has registered to participate in the annual Alzheimer's Association Worcester Walk to End Alzheimer's. It will be held on Sunday, October 4th. With adding the Evergreens to our continuum, we have a closer connection to the cause. Um, given everything that's going on in the world, this walk may look a bit different than past walks. The sales team and the committee that we create here will continue to give updates as the time gets closer. Um, we are encouraging residents, families, friends, and staff to join the Briarwood community team. If you are interested in participating in the walk itself, making a donation, or volunteering on walk day. The sales team will be sending out more information on how to register. But in the meantime, if you are interested in joining the team, call myself or Alice, and we'll be happy to walk you through the registration process. So that is it for now, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of your smiling faces soon. Stay well. Hello. Well, we miss you, and it's so wonderful to have this opportunity to talk with you again. Um, I want to say just a few things. Uh, one is, um, the first thing is on behalf of the Briarwood Residents Association, you missed having your annual meeting of the whole association at which you would have elected officers together 
in March that was canceled because of the pandemic and a monthly meeting in April of the Residents Association Representative Council did not happen. Your new officers and committee chairs are getting together and the executive board has just met and is preparing to have a monthly meeting of the representative council to represent all of you and looking at having that sometime in the next week. So information will come out to those of you who are on the representative council. Your secretary, Sue Stevens, will get that out to you as soon as the arrangements are finalized. It'll be a Zoom meeting. And But I just also wanted the other, all residents to know that your residents association officers and committee chairs are preparing to act on your behalf and move ahead. So that's happening. Uh, in another segment of this town hall, which each of us is taping separately, Paul may speak a little bit about quarantining, or he may have already done so, um, when you see, when you hear me speak now. And also, probably something written will come out. I'm not going to go into details now, but if you have an opportunity to go to a doctor's appointment and it's important that you go, or you need to go to the hospital for something. We don't want you to hesitate to get medical care that you need. If you need answers to questions that you might have about requirements for quarantining after a trip to the hospital or to a large facility such as 5 Neponset Street, please give me a call and I can clarify that for you. We do not require quarantining if you have to go to urgent care, so don't worry about that if you need to make a quick trip to urgent care. But call me if you have other questions. In, in that regard, in terms of medical care, I wanted to remind folks that we have the campus nurse, Jennifer Thorpe, who many of you have talked to on the phone or met with in person in the past. Right now, she's available by phone. She's in her office in the Wellness Center, but the Wellness Center is closed. But she is here on campus between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., Monday through Friday, usually, not holidays. And you can reach her through Judy, or you may already have her direct line. Uh, you can call her and talk to her if you have questions about whether you should go to the doctor, if something has just come up and you're not sure if it requires medical attention. Give her a call and she's very happy to help you out with that and has helped out many people now over the months she's been here and I think people are really enjoying their contacts with her. So feel free to use her services. She's provided by Overlook Visiting Nurse Association to us. Uh, I also wanted to mention again that Kristen, our fitness coordinator, is helping me to stay in touch with you and all of us to stay in touch with you. She's made calls to many of you and she's also lately been doing a lot of the being in touch with you through being outside. She goes off on a walk and gathers up folks or sees folks and she's really enjoying seeing you outside. She, in addition to the programs that she's doing on our TV channel, where you get to follow along with exercise, she's very happy to talk with you outside at a good social distance and uh, likes to hear how you're doing. So do feel free to talk with her if you see her and she will continue to be making some calls. Lastly, I wanted to say how much we as staff feel your concern and your care through the messages and cards and voicemails you leave us. Um, the ways you find it to reach out to us, the clap if you care is a wonderful heartwarming time that we can share those of you who are outside and staff who are free to come around. It, it warms our hearts to be able to see you and we miss you. So thank you for all your expressions of goodwill, uh, your gratitude for how things are going well. We're very happy about that too. And we can all be very proud of the cooperation that people are extending uh, on all fronts so that we can keep each other safe. Thanks for keeping up social distancing. It's really important as you hear from the governor and wearing a mask, which I'm not doing right now, but it's right here with me. So, and keep up the hand washing also. So thanks very much and we miss you. Hi, hey, good afternoon everyone. Well, here we are again like this. We do miss you down here. Uh, all the wait staff can't wait to get back in the dining room. And I'm sure you're real interested in when, 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 when. There is no answer for that yet. Um, I'm trying to get answers from the Board of Health 
Uh, we seem to fall into a middle category. We're not a restaurant. We're not assisted living or long-term care. So there's nearly no category for us. Um, with the Board of Health the way they are, you try calling them, you get nobody. You get a recording that tells you the voicemail is full, and thank you for calling, and click. So that's where I am right now. Well, Spoilson does have a live body, but she can't answer any questions. Uh, so she's trying to put me in touch with somebody somewhere to find out where we can fall into that category. That said, however, when we do start, there are going to be uh, restrictions and limitations that we do have to follow. The dining room will prob probably be at half capacity only. Two seatings where we'll dictate which units get to come to which time. A uh, certain amount of seats left for cottages. We'll probably uh, use the private dining room, much to everybody's dismay. We will uh, require you to wear the masks into the dining room. And then after that, you're on your own. Um, there'll be nothing on the tables. You won't find salt, pepper, sugar, water glasses. You'll find hand sanitizer, and you'll find your silverware wrapped in a single-use napkin, no linen. There will be no condiments in jars. You'll have single-use condiments, single-use menus. We will, we will use the china. The dish machine will sanitize glasses, plates, silverware, but they won't be on your table ahead of time. All of these steps have to be necessary in order to keep this virus at bay. The two main entry points so that we don't have a lot of congregating in the front of the dining room will be the double doors that you normally come in now for the dining room, plus there'll be uh, a second hostess on the other side where the double doors to the Old West Boylston room are. Those are the entry points only. Since exiting doesn't require a build-up, you'll just use a single door near the buffet line. There's a lot that's going to have to happen. There's a lot you're going to have to follow. Uh, if you're sick, you're not going to be allowed in. Um, your takeouts and delivery will still be readily available. You'll not see a, a salad bar or a buffet line for quite a long time. I don't even, I'm not sure as to when we can even get back to that until this virus has been beaten or disappears again as quickly as it came. These are just some of the steps that we're looking at. We're looking at a lot of the similar steps for the cafe where we'll have maybe 12 seats in the cafe six in the craft and chat and then outdoors. No guests, no guests anywhere for quite a while. Sometime this summer, we hope, with the governor's phase three or even to phase four, it's going to be quite a while. So you, you'll have to understand that. Um, we're, our goal is to hopefully get the cafe open before the main dining room, not by a lot, but just to, to get things started. Um, this week, though, you're gonna, some of you are starting to get phone calls from the housekeeping department. We are going to be getting to schedule uh, cleanings again. We have uh, Taylor will be starting on the annuals in the, in the cottages. Um, Alex will be assisting. There's going to be um, phone calls for apartments to do the one-hour cleanings that are needed. We'll have some of the girls over here do the annuals in the apartments. We've got a lot to catch up on. You need to be patient. We will get to you. Uh, it's not going to be an easy process. You know, a, an annual takes almost the whole day. It's, it's a lot, you know, if it's six hours, well, that's pretty much the day for the girls. Um, the one-hour cleanings, we're trying to pick up from where we left off. We're also trying to identify people who may need more help than others. There's some rules that apply. You will be required to wear a mask while the housekeeper is there. If you can't, cannot wear a mask, then we're going to have to ask you to leave for the time that the housekeeper is in there. The housekeeper themselves will be, having, will be wearing a mask and gloves. 
but we also need you to do your part. If you're sick, they cannot go in there to clean. It can be the common cold. It's, we're not going to make that determination. We're just going to leave. If you don't want to wear the mask or vacate the, your, your home, they're going to leave. I don't mean to sound too strenuous, but it's just it's the new it's the new normal right now, and we all have to follow the rules to to get this started. Um, it has been a long time since we've been able to do things, and we know that we need to get started. We want to get started. Just be a little bit more patient. We're almost there, okay? And. Some people have asked me about cookouts. At this time, I'd still say, yeah, at the end of June, yeah, we can do something. Um, we'll be spread out pretty far, though. But that should be the first cookout. I'm not sure about a social hour, but at least a cookout where we can spread out quite a bit and get back to a normal, at least for the three months, clam bake and then a, a, the Texas barbecue. I don't see us being able to do any large catering parties right now. Hopefully by the end of the summer, beginning of fall, we can get, we get back to that. Everything depends upon what happens with the virus. We're, we're doing our best to keep everybody safe, but we also know that we have to start the process of going forward again. So we're getting there. So just a little more patience. And if you have any questions, feel free, just call me, okay? Thanks a lot. Be well. Hello, everyone. It's so great to be with you, even if we have to do it this way on the video. I wanted to let you know we've got some great things planned for next month. First of all, as you heard, Paula said we can open up and start doing some things a little bit differently. And we're excited about that. Um, first of all, the fitness center. What we're going to do in the fitness center is we're going to start exercise classes to begin with. We have to limit the classes to only five people and they're going to be about 45 minutes long. We'll have a schedule. They'll start on the hour, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and possibly 12 o'clock. And Kristen will be in charge of getting you in getting you situated with your equipment and then getting you out safely and then she's going to disinfect in between classes. We are going to be contacting you and asking you what your time frame would be because we want to keep the classes the same every day and then we're going to repeat the classes. So you're not going to be missing out on anything, it'll just be a little bit different. On really nice days we're going to set it up on the um, patio out back, we're going to put a tent up and then we can have some classes outside and those still will be five people. You are going to have to wear your mask even during exercise to protect each other from the virus, but we're going to make it fun and exciting and it will be new and different. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, we're not going to open up the uh, equipment area yet. That's probably going to be in phase three, our Briarwood phase three. So we're not going to be looking towards that at this moment. And right now the pool is not open. We're working with the local board of health to figure that one out as well. Um, other than that, I've put together your schedule for you. Um, June is actually going to be pretty packed. We have some fun things going on. We actually have a writing class. They're going to start a program. It's actually the second Monday in June. She's going to do a program on Zoom and then introduce you to what she does for her writing workshop. And then you can be a part of that sometime at the end of June. So we'll figure out the schedule after that. But you want to definitely sit in at 2 o'clock on uh, June 8th to that Zoom meeting. And she can take as many people that can come into Zoom on that meeting and just introduce you to what she's going to be teaching you. She's actually a professor over at Assumption College and she was referred to us and she's not even charging us for this. So it's something you may want to be interested in because you can tell your life story and she's going to teach you how to do it. It's really going to be exciting. We also have, um, I think Michael Perry's coming back. He's actually created a video online for us that'll come through our channel 900 or 901, depending on which one we're on now. Um, we have some other, we're going to replay uh, the one from David Miller about Scotland. So you're going to get to see that again. Anything that's live and streaming, like we have the BSO concerts that are on Sundays at 2, and they're all going to be on your calendar. So this calendar is almost like your TV guide for our, channel, our Briarwood channel, okay? 
Um, I just wanted to let you know what's going on with the channel 900-901. Uh, Spectrum is here right now as we speak. They're replacing a very big piece of equipment down there that actually does the transmissions through your televisions. And they're still working with some engineers to make sure that we can make that work correctly. We switched from channel 900 to 901 because actually 900 went first and then the 901 went after that. So we are waiting to see what happens with that to see which channel we're going to have as the program channel. If all goes well, we'll be back to 900 and everything will be the way it was. If not, it'll be 901. But either way, you'll be able to get the slides and the information through that system. I hope you're liking my programming. Um, it, the BBC is not doing the program currently. I'm actually going out and finding different programs that are on uh, different formats and putting them up on your TV. If you have any suggestions at all, I would love to hear them because I can actually go out and get programs done that way. It's really working great. I'm really, I want to say a special thank you to Michael Perry because when I called him a couple months ago, he was absolutely not open to doing anything virtually. And then with just a little bit of prodding, he was able to put this incredible PowerPoint um, show together and do it all on Zoom and then record it and edit it. So when you see it, you just, it's amazing what he did. Other than that, we're all good to go. The month is looking fun and packed again. Once we get outside, we can start opening up the patios, and we're also going to be opening up um, all the different places that you can sit. There will be some rules and regulations. I don't want to sound negative about using the craft and chat room and the other rooms, but for example, the craft, the craft and chat room will be open from like 10 to 2 during the day. It'll be limited to between 5 and 7 people in there. You won't be actually able to play games or anything sit across from each other. There are stations that are already set up there. You need to be there for about 45 minutes and then every hour on the hour we have to have everybody leave so we can sanitize everything. I know, it's our new normal. I hate that phrase, but it really is what we have to do. We have to work around schedules for the cleaning people as well, so we're not sure if that's gonna be open on the weekend because we wanna keep you safe. And that's the bottom line is you guys have done a great job of just keeping each other safe and keeping each other in your thoughts and prayers and I really appreciate what you've done. And keep doing it. What you're doing is working and we want to keep it safe and fun here at Briarwood. So with that, I'm just going to say goodbye and tell you that I miss you terribly. Oh, one more thing. This is the sign language for I love you. I love you. Some people thought I was doing something different, but this is a nice way of saying I love you. Good afternoon, Briarwood. It's Greg Christo checking in with you. It's uh, May 20th, and uh, I think we're on day 60 some odd of this quarantine. I hope everyone's doing well. You know, we're getting through it. There's a light at the end of the tunnel, so they say. Uh, we're all almost there, so. The good news is we have some different items around the campus. We'll be opening up soon, so it's, it's looking promising. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about or what, what I have going on in my world for you. Uh, first thing, we have Spectrum, which you guys have all been participating wonderfully with uh, as far as getting your new boxes in. Um, next week, the, the day, day after Memorial Day, we'll be coming around helping you guys get set up with your boxes. Um, I think there's 40, 50 maybe or so of you that we have to come around to. Um, I'm thinking about doing it geographically, taking different sections of the community and trying to give us a little window. Um, but I will call you before we come the day before. Um, if we're coming on Tuesday, I'll call you on Friday, give you a heads up, uh, just so you're all aware. Um, so it should go pretty well. Another item we have going on is the landscaping outside. Uh, we're working hard. I've had some extra help this season, getting the landscaping looking the best it can. Um, so we're really pushing to try to get all your mulching done and get your properties looking the best they can for Memorial Day. Granted, you can't go outside and do anything, but uh, at least your properties will look good. No, I'm just kidding. So um, what else we got? So over at the Elms building, we've been busy. I've had uh, Covenant Fire over there doing some work, um, upgrading our fire suppression system. Uh, so right now they've been doing all their attic work this upcoming couple of weeks will be in the main corridors of the second level 
and then eventually we'll be moving into the, each resident uh, that's at the Elms on the second floor. Uh, we're pushing that as far back as we can to get out of the lockdown that we have. Um, but just so you're aware, um, those guys will be making their way down the hallway, making some noise. Um, and also in tandem with them, I have some of my staff actually painting the second level, um, two, of the, two of the hallways in that building. So um, we're trying to make some improvements for you. And uh, when you finally can come out, it should look a lot better. So uh, those are a couple key things we have going on on the maintenance side. Um, moving forward, we just got permission to start attacking the work orders. So we've been only handling the emergency calls um, as part of this protocol. Um, we're kind of lifting that, but at the same time next week we're going to have a busy week trying to get all your spectrum issues squared away for you. Uh, so we're going to integrate a little bit of the maintenance, but our main focus next week will be with the spectrum, getting you guys set up with that. Going forward, um, and obviously if you have an emergency, call Judy, call the emergency maintenance line. Uh, we'll, we'll come over and take care of you. Um, so just to keep that in mind, a um, little cooperation during that time will be great, and we'll uh, get everybody squared away. Um, one question that was asked to me about, that came from the BRA, as far as how we'll handle the work orders, um, we're going to go back, we have an itemized list, a time, time stamp basically for each work order that went in. So what we'll try to do is go back further into the list um, and address those and work progressively up to the most recent. So, um, all in all, we're doing well, we're getting through it. It's a beautiful day, we have a beautiful week. Memorial Day's here, so we all get an extra day off, which is awesome. And uh, I hope everyone's doing well. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good day.